So, um, wow, that's shiny. Okay, The Double Trouble Society by Carrie Hope Fletcher. The book I didn't know she had written and released until book number two came out and I bought that one and went, oh, this is book number two. I should probably get book number one. Um, I got book number one a, a good while later, let's say that. Um, but I got it. It's a very short read and it being middle grade, um, the font and all that is quite large. We also have um, like very cute graphics. Uh, what is it? What's it called? It's like header chapter graphics. It's called something. I don't, I don't ever remember what. Anyway, so what was their names again? Okay, Ivy and Maggie, they live next door to each other, pretty much. Well, there is a house right in the middle of theirs, but it's a bit further down so they can literally see each other's bedrooms across the other house's lawn. Great explanation. Anyway, they are best friends. They, well, they're best friends. <laughs> Um, so, the house in the middle, it's actually known as the Crowwood, what's it called? The Crowwood? No, the house in the middle of theirs is called, or known as Hokum House, uh, and it's basically, um, it, it's, it doesn't look like a functional lived-in house until one night. So, Ivy and Maggie are having their nightly chats just before bed, and in well between their houses walks this mysterious person they can't tell what this person looks like but this person walks in through hokum house's front yard and all of a sudden the house doesn't look de decrepit de what, what's it called it, it doesn't look like it's abandoned it looks like it's always been pretty some magic has been going on. Magic goes on right in front of their eyes. So, turns out every blue moon, so every blue moon is literally only every like, what is it, two and a half years or something like that? It's when the, it's, it is when there is a, a full moon, one more full moon than counted so there's one full moon every month usually but every now and again there will be two full moons in one month um and that extra full moon is called a blue moon <laughs> very bad explanation please google it instead of listening to me um yeah i just realized the fan is still on but i'm gonna leave it on because it's so hot anyway so like 300 years ago or so, this witch, this evil wicked witch, uh, took 12 children from the town and ate their hearts. I think there was, it was the hearts. It was the hearts, I think. <laughs> Basically, this witch needs a 13th heart. Speed forward a little bit and uh, so there's been this protection going on but uh, Ivy and Maggie they kind of accidentally break this protection cycle so the Wicked Witch is back. The Wicked Witch wants the 13th heart. There's a whole backstory be being like the witch um, made a deal with the demon or the devil or whatever and um, basically to live forever and have all the magic of the world or something like that. Um, <laughs> for a middle grade book it's very evolved, it's a very evolved plot and I'm here for it. Also the whole, um, the whole premise of it is just intriguing to me as a, as a reader first off but also as a lover of mysterious fantasy supernatural things so yeah <laughs> it's a great uh, palate cleanser actually from reading the high fantasy and middle fantasy and all the other kinds of fantasy it's a great palate cleanser it's a good it's a good time um the one thing i didn't quite enjoy about it was that 
it feels like towards the end it feels like it's getting wrapped up a bit too fast um like oh now we've done this much of the plot and now we just need to wrap it up because it's uh, supposed to be a middle grade book and it's supposed to be short and sweet and all that um so that was the only thing i was like oh well this feels sort of rushed it wasn't a bad ending um it just felt a bit rushed now because of the way this book ends this is very much a could be a standalone book so i'm wondering what's gonna happen in book two i know it's called the double trouble society and the wicked curse if i'm not quite mistaken um so uh what curse is going on there because there was curse in this one anyway i'm here for it uh, I'll probably read a couple of other books before I pick that one up and have that little palate cleanse kind of a deal um, But you'll you'll see it in like a sec Let's be honest the magic of filming <laughs> Anyway, see you in a bit the double trouble society and the wicked curse book number two I I felt like book one was very much a standalone kind of a book so I was wondering how they were gonna pick up in book number two and uh, now I know so let's talk about it so we start this book by introducing three new characters because that's not confusing um, but then we get right back into the old gang the the gang from book number one so we have what are their names again Ivy and Maggie um, they are kind of the main ones and then in book one they sort of like made more friends I suppose because they saved the town now they're kind of popular so now um, in the double trouble society as it were the little gang um, they now have more friends from book one that's uh, also helped save the town so the like big premise for book one was that I guess the devil, a bad, bad man, he made a deal with one of the witches um, to, you know, get immortality, mortal life. But to do that, she'd have to eat like 13 kids' hearts. Children's books these days, actually children's books always been like this, hasn't it? <laughs> It's an interesting concept. But they they broke that curse and now that witch and her sister are now living peacefully mostly in town. Um, they still have some I guess animosity from the other adults. The kids all love them but the adults are a bit like mm, you're not really welcome here. Yeah no please please go away. Um, so it's there's that. Um, but the curse was broken but bad bad man was not defeated it was just the curse now the bad bad man is back in town and he wants what was owed to him basically what does he do well he he basically wreaks havoc on the town and <laughs> that's basically what what's happening um uh, obviously the kids save the save the day again but it's not without a, a work um a lot like the first one i felt like we were building up to something throughout the book and then we just had a few couple of few pages left and then it was like the end <laughs> everything's fine um i would have liked like a middle um, a little middle bit and maybe the ending was a bit longer per se so that we'd get like all the uh, all the proper action and shit <laughs> so bad with words anyway so whereas book one just ended as mostly a standalone this one leaves it off being like well there could be more adventures in the future so we'll see if uh if carrie hope fletcher is gonna write any more books in this series there is like a opening for it i suppose um i do wonder what she'd do as like the plot of it because i feel like that curse and the bad man who did the curse that's sort of over and done with it's gonna have to be something new but what but what I don't know I honestly don't know um so we'll see I suppose but this is it for now I'll end this video here because I have no more books in that series 
because there are no more books in that series. <laughs> Makes sense? Yeah. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, yeah, sh I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye-bye.